When I saw this headboard online, I loved the way it looked, but it's so simple. What did it cost $350? So today I'm going to show you how to build one for less than half. And to do that, here's what we'll need. Miter saw, a circular saw, utility knife, a tape measure, speed square, a straight edge, I'm using a four foot level, painter's tape, wood glue, a drill driver, sander, polyurethane, wood stain, spray paint, a 5 16 inch drill bit, half inch wood screws, one inch wood screws, four inch flat L-shaped corner braces, three inch flat L-shaped corner braces, heavy duty corner braces, carriage bolts with nuts, three six foot select pine one by threes, one 10 foot one by four common board, and for the headboard itself, one four by eight by half inch birch sanded plywood. My first step is to cut my plywood to size. It's going to be 63 inches wide by 32 inches tall. And I'm going to make it a little harder on myself. Instead of cutting it from a corner, I'm going to cut it from the middle. It really only adds one extra cut, but that allows me to get rid of some of these factory defects that are pretty common with lumber these days. And I have a few tips to show you how to cut sheet goods like this with a circular saw. After measuring and marking a 63 inch by 32 inch section, Draw out the headboard pattern by using a straight edge to connect the dots. Then make sure you've got a sharp blade on your utility knife. Alright, when you're cutting across plywood like this, across the grain, it helps to score the top layer with a razor knife like this beforehand to keep it from splintering. Another tip is to use painter's tape along that score line and it'll help protect the plywood that we're going to keep from the shoe of the circular saw. One more tip about cutting. Before plugging in your circular sole, first set the depth of the blade. Having the blade set just below the material will make cutting safer and more productive. Now I've been using a circular saw for years, so I'm pretty comfortable cutting a straight line without a guide. But if you'd prefer a guide, all you need is a straight edge, like a level or a nice piece of lumber, and you'd clamp it to either side of your board, and then you're able to push up against it with the saw as you're cutting, and you'll always get a straight line. These three boards are going to become the frame for the plywood headboard. All I need to do is make a few miter cuts. Set your miter saw to 45 degrees and prepare to cut each board on its edge. First, make two inside miter cuts on each end of one of your 1x3s. From one short edge of the miter to the other, this board should measure 63 inches long. Next, miter one end on the other two 1x3s before resetting your miter back to zero. Then measure 53 inches from the short end of each 1x3 and cut it square. These will be the legs. Finally, mark and cut the 10 foot 1x4 into three equal boards, about 40 inches each. Now's the exciting part of assembling everything together. So I'm gonna start with the plywood face down on the table, and then I'll attach these corner braces to the top of each side. It really depends on your particular mattress set as to how far up you want your headboard to start off the ground. For this particular bed, I'm starting it at 21 inches, which is where I already made the mark on my 1x4. So now I'm ready to glue it and screw it into place. I'm adding the third 1x4 to the center of the top. This will give the headboard a little added structure and stability. All right, the side of my frame is going to attach right here and I wanna make sure that it's flush with the one by four on the back. That way, when we turn it over, there'll be a nice reveal on the front. Attach two of your two inch L-shaped brackets to the top and bottom of each one by four leg. Then add a little wood glue before securing the one by three frame to the headboard using all three brackets on each side. When you have brackets with the recess for the screw head like these, you have to make sure that the screw is centered in the hole. Otherwise, as you drive the screw in, it can adjust where the bracket's sitting. All right, let's turn this thing around and get to sanding. Okay. 
I'm using a Briar Smoke colored oil stain and applying evenly with the brush, but instead of immediately wiping off the stain, I'm letting it sit for a minute to reveal a darker and deeper stain. I'm really happy with the results. Let it dry overnight before adding a polyurethane sealer. I chose a matte finish which suits this campaign style headboard perfectly. To attach my headboard to the bed frame, I'm going to use some carriage bolts, but first I have to drill holes through the headboard. And I went ahead and measured my bed frame, the holes are 59 and a half inches apart. So I'm going to mark that measurement on the legs down here, and then I'll drill two holes on each side, and it'll be nice and secure. Now I'm ready to install the hardware that's really gonna make this headboard look finished. I picked up these corner braces from the hardware aisle, super inexpensive, and I spray painted them gold to make them look fancy. And I'm gonna put one on the top corner of each side. there you have it, my headboard is all done. And I hope if you use this tutorial to build yourself a headboard that you'll send me a picture. I'm at Checking In With Chelsea on social media. So thanks for checking in. I've got so many projects to share with you, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next episode.